And so I'll start with a story. Uh, in 2013, Peter Higgs co-won a Nobel Prize in physics after a Switzerland team measured for the first time a Higgs boson, which is a fundamental particle that Higgs and a few others predicted should exist 50 years earlier. And this groundbreaking work uh, has shed new light on fundamental questions and mysteries, uh, such as how particles acquire mass and even the origins of our own universe. However, in an interview with The Guardian, right before the ceremony, uh, he mentioned that in today's academia, he would most likely not be able to get a job because of his low productivity. It turns out, indeed, Higgs only published 26 papers in his entire career. And as a comparison, uh, the average MIT professor published over 70 papers in their pre-tenure period, which is eight years. So let's think about this, right? Does that make sense? Uh, and indeed, I would say that Higgs' story speaks directly to the most fundamental problem in today's academia, which is its obsession with quantity at the expense of quality. Uh, and sadly, we now know from meta-scientific evidence, rather, that academia is in fact in a quality control crisis. And a quality control crisis in terms of a transparency crisis, a reproducibility crisis, and a replication crisis. And so, for example, the transparency crisis, which is probably the most fundamental, is reflected in the fact that to this day, over 90% of all peer reviewed papers have data which are unavailable without valid justification. And this is evidence coming from uh, biomedicine, social sciences, econ, and psychology. And so, of course, this quality control crisis is devastating for the research community in terms of stifling cumulative knowledge. It's a crisis of ethics and accountability crisis for the profession of science because we are not accountable if we are not sharing our data without valid justification. But of course, this quality control crisis is even more devastating for the public and the broader society because in an advanced democratic society, Science is the foundational public institution upon which other public institutions are uh, depend on. And so we're talking about the legal system, the education system, environmental issues, public policy, and health. Indeed, most tragically, medical patients uh, are suffering and dying. And so we're t this quality control crisis uh, is costing us lives. So this is not just an academic debate. And so the solution to this quality control problem is to start measuring and tracking minimum transparency of research because science is a quality control system, but it requires minimum transparency to be able to operate properly. And so when you think about quality, uh, quality in science is the extent to which a finding withstands different kinds of scrutiny, like independent peer review, post-publication peer review, reanalyses, replication. But for all that good stuff to happen, we need minimum transparency. And so in this sense, we can say that minimum transparency is required in science conceptually, definitionally, pragmatically. Uh, and indeed, this is why minimum transparency is required ethically, as an ethical duty as part of public funders' codes of conduct. This is already expected from us as a moral, ethical duty. But of course, because no one is tracking minimum transparency, uh, there's no way to enforce these ethical principles, which then allows researchers to do what they want. And unfortunately, there are a lot of rogue researchers who are cutting corners, cheating, and outright fraud, which is on the rise, retractions, and so on. So, so minimum transparency is required conceptually and ethically it's not optional, it's not negotiable, but what is uh, negotiable is how to implement such a system of 
checking the transparency of research and researchers to ensure that it meets a minimum standard, right? So we need to draw the line somewhere. So it might be difficult to draw the line <laughs> in the sand, but it needs to happen. And our solution in our Curious Science pilot project was to choose the lowest possible transparency standard that's most generous, that has the most generous requirements as a way to start because the hardest part is to start. Uh, and, and we thought that the most defensible thing to do is to choose the lowest possible transparency standard that still conforms to current codes of conduct by the public funders. And, and, and what is also up to debate is who does this checking and how can they remain accountable uh, to the researchers. And uh, our solution for that is potentially to become an accredited, independent, external, nonprofit entity who itself is audited for conforming to auditing systems and to have a transparent, accountable, transparency, transparency checking system. And of course, funders should be doing this transparency checking. And I think some of them are listening, so this is good. <laughs> Uh, and some of them are starting, but I would just mention that uh, we still think we need a broader system because not all researchers are funded publicly, uh, and so the funders should be checking this, but it appears we, all, we still would need a broader system uh, for research that is not publicly funded. And so in closing, academia's main problem is its obsession on quantity at the expense of quality and the solution is to track minimum transparency so that science's quality control processes can operate properly. Thank you.